Hi, I'm Kip Cotter. This is my son, Kyle Cotter. Uh, we're down here in Hillsdale County at the farm. Uh, we got a new new JX3 saddle sent, sent to us from John to try out. Uh, it's his newest version. Uh, we've got the old one here, we've got the new one here. And we'll go over some of those differences. Kyle will kind of show it off up in the tree and we'll we'll cover these and, and some of the thoughts on, on uh, more conventional saddles and uh, stands, etc. All right, right up front here, I want to let everybody know that uh, John from JX3 sent me this uh, new hybrid uh, to test and uh, do a review on and give him some feedback. So I did not purchase this new JX3. I did buy uh, one last year and the year before that uh, for me and Kyle. So I've purchased two of these things. Uh, John sent me this one to test and kind of compare and contrast uh, to the old version and uh, everybody that that knows me knows that I, I love these JX3s. Um, so, you know, this is kind of a, a review of the concept of the JX3, but it just wanted to be uh, full disclosure uh, and let you know that, uh, you know, I did not purchase this one. Um, if you want more information than what's shown on this slide, uh, you can just go to JX3 outdoors.com and uh, John's got a bunch of information on there and links, etc. And that's uh, where you'd be able to purchase one uh, if you so choose. So let's jump into the review. All right, so the first thing we thought we'd do is uh, kind of have Kyle help us show what the weights are of some of this, these pieces of equipment. So Kyle's grabbing on to the, the old version of the JX3. Mm -hmm. Pull the weight on that, see what we get. What do you got, Kyle? About 12.3. Okay. So 12 pounds. I got a pad added on that. New one. New one feels a little heavier. About 13.4. Okay, 13.4 on the new one. A little heavier. Those are the upgrades. Uh, yeah, there's some upgrades on there, and I think there's some adjustability, so there's some, some bigger components on that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now Kyle's going to pull a weight on the Arrow Hunter Kestrel, the, the first saddles that we used uh, two years ago. Loaded up with a lineman, lineman's belt, and a tether, and a pouch. What do you got, Kyle? Four pounds? So about four pounds there. Um, of course, we'd need to have a ring of steps, which we have over here, uh, and we'll get a pull a weight on some other things right now. Okay, now we're going to weigh uh, some other components. Kyle's got a ring of steps here he's going to weigh forget which ones these are um, just plastic 1.5 okay we got 1.5 on the ring of steps we don't have any knee pads uh, here but you know they're light obviously here we've got a lone wolf hand climber segment I'll lift that up for Kyle that's another way some guys will use to get up trees and I think it can be a good way what do you got 4.2 4.2 on that What else we got here, Kyle? We got some sticks. Okay, here we've got some modded sticks, some hawks that I did, hawk heliums, I want to say, rope conversion. Um, Kyle's going to try to weigh those. See, grabbing something a little more solid there. Yeah. Right on the end here. Yep, just anywhere. That'll do it. What do we got on those? About 7.5. So 7.5 pounds on the hawk heliums. How many we got there? Three of them? Yep, three of them. So those are nice. Those are cut down. Got some more steps here. Here we've got the beast sticks. I've got, what do I got, four of them there? Four. Okay, four beast sticks, really light. Let's have a look at those. What do you got for four beasts? Oops, forgot to zero it. So 7.8. So 7.8 pounds for four beast sticks. Safety harness? Yep, safety harness, which we'd have to have with a conventional stand. There's no no tether there, but again, that, that's a little bit more weight. So 2.7? 2.7 pounds on that. Now what do we got here? Old, good, trusty Lone Wolf Alpha, huh? Let's yep. see if you can grab that thing. Alpha 2, maybe. What are you coming in at? About 12.7. So just about 13 pounds. That's right, it's from memory on the Lone Wolf Alpha. Okay. About the same as the JX3. 
And here we found an old summit, either either Viper or Goliath climber. I can't remember which one this one is. We got several of them, just for completeness. What are you coming in at, Kyle? 30.7. 30.7 on this thing. Okay, yeah, I think that's an old one though. The newer ones might be a little bit lighter. So we went through weighing all that stuff uh, just to kind of build this table uh, as a summary of just some of the, the compares and contrasts of saddles versus, you know, hang on stand and uh, some of the tools you might use to get up the tree and tools you may use uh, either with a conventional stand or with a saddle. So we've got the old JX3 and the new JX3 and the Kestrel is a, a saddle type uh, hunting uh, equipment. Uh, and as you can see there, that includes the Lyman's belt and the tether, although on the Kestrel, I think we may have weighed it uh, without a Lyman's belt uh, by accident. So the Kestrel might come in just a little bit heavier than we're showing there. Um, the old JX3 and the new JX3, um, you know, while they're heavier than the Kestrel, uh, there are reasons that, that they that we'll get into a little bit later uh, that they might be good for you. Um, the differences between the old and the new really is about a pound heavier, it seems like, uh, on the new newest version versus an older version. Um, the Kestrel, as you can see, is quite a bit lighter. Um, and we've got that with the, you know, other observations. You know, you'll see the you know four B sticks uh, equal about three of my Hawk modified sticks. So uh, that's interesting. Get you up the tree a little bit higher uh, with those B sticks. You could use you know things like uh, uh, an eight or another things uh, though to get to get you extra height. All, all kinds of methods, one stick method, etc. I'm not covering all that here. This is just kind of some of the uh, pairings you might have to get up a tree um, and hunt. The Lone Wolf Alpha that comes in, you know, carrying that stand in with sticks and, and you need a safety harness, obviously, with a conventional stand, uh, be it a, a hang on stand or a climber. So I've, you know, added a, a very light, actually, safety harness here at, you know, 2.7 pounds. Uh, so that adds a little bit to the weight there. The climbers have come a long way. That one that we weighed was just an old one I traded for. It was an old steel version of Summit, so it's pretty old and that's, that's crazy heavy. Um, I did go to the Summit website and find that the lightest Summit climber I could find, not to say that's the lightest, but the lightest Summit I saw there was like 15 pounds, and that was the Summit Open Shot uh, SD, which is, you know, very light, very uh, kind of petite climber. Uh, so that, that's a real option. Uh, the the issue is obviously being that you need a, or should have a tree uh, without branches uh, where you, do, you don't have to worry about that with the saddle. You can have... Uh, uh, trees with branches um, as long as er, as well as the hang on stand you can have trees with branches and just to me the saddle the you know the saddle be it either a conventional style saddle or that one of these jx3 hybrids is that you can you can hide behind the tree and that to me is a big deal the hybrid to me uh, wins the day over a conventional saddle uh, for me i've got some back issues and uh it's just it's just all day comfort uh for me so let's uh Let's jump back in to the review. Okay, so now I thought we'd take a few minutes and kind of go over uh, the comparison of the old version and the new version, just explain some of the things quickly in the JX3. Um, John has some good information. There's some good information online just explaining the different uh, components of the JX3 and how it works, so this won't be comprehensive on that. This is just to give some uh, impressions, on, initial impressions on the thing and uh, compare and contrast. So here we have the old one. Kyle's got the new one there. Kind of open it up and show everything now at first i mean there's a lot going on i remember that was my first impression when i saw this there's just a lot of stuff um it helps that it's all together on a frame though it doesn't get all twisted uh, quite as much as an old guido's web might have um kyle's got the new one here they look very similar first impression padding yep kyle looks like the padding's a little thicker on that one yep. the shoulder pad so it improved straps different handle different handle on the thing. We see we've got some scallops up here on the back edge. I was like, what in the world's that for? Well, it turns out that's for a shoulder strap on, on a gun or a crossbow that you carry and kind of helps bite in. So I think that's a kind of a smart ad. Um, big, uh, big improvement with the, oh yeah, the hook the, for, <laughs> for catching your the catch. Yeah. Yeah. John, uh, John was probably tired of hearing me. I, I was just begging for a, a different hook on here. It was always a little tricky for me to, to put up the, the seat behind that will show. It's a little easier now with this bigger hook. So mm -hmm. just small little things. Now John's got different buckles put in this, more of a conventional uh, Cobra steel buckles, uh, which would be nice. Um, 
help you not not have a break you know honestly uh, you could step on these other buckles the, the plastic conventional buckles and, and break them uh, we never had a problem with that but some guys might have wanted that and even though they're metal they're they're pretty quiet that was kind of my concern when i yeah. saw they were metal yeah very quiet still quiet. they even have a, a little loop at, in the back here to prevent it from hitting anything yeah that's nice it looks like you know maybe that's an attachment point to it some sort but nothing there so we you'd have a hard time making noise now you could flap it up there if you were jumping up and down hills and your guy could put a piece of uh of foam tape on here you know to just make that totally preventative which you know we probably will do mm -hmm. um initially on this again we spent no time with it and i'm going to reach out to john but these new straps let me get them here where's the leg strap on it right here these these new straps it serves as your 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 leg strap and actually your strap in the back to to actually hold this thing shut and you know stow some things in between here like a coat when you're headed out mm -hmm. um having a little bit of trouble with these <laughs> personally kyle and i were they're just they're meant to, to to caption the strap i think is the purpose of this so it isn't flying around that might bother some people having straps loose uh but they're having a hard time really easily especially one-handed adjusting the length of the strap which right you know, seems to seems to require two hands even when you're up in a tree to to adjust those leg straps right uh, you'd most likely have them adjusted and fit for you yeah but the big thing would be if you're using this like a backpack um you got stuff stowed in between here you're gonna want to be able to easily tighten it so you can like secure everything in, in the backpack yeah and as it is right now with the new adjustment it seems like you got to use both hands every time yeah and you know with the old style strap it was just it's just an easy an easy cinch pull um, and, and I used it a lot actually when the winter when the winter hit here now you know most of the season I'm not taking my stuff off and stowing it and taking in I'm, I'm actually you know on the farm here anyways we give short walks to our, our stand so I wasn't using it in that fashion you just leave it loose and it, it'd stay on here no problem um, and then it was already preset for the, the leg length that you wanted but in the winter I take off a big heavy coat store it in between here use those straps on there and cinch it down so nothing would fall out. I even throw my binox in there everything so i could walk in and pretty much a t-shirt and stay nice and cool carry all this to the tree and get dressed there um, those straps really worked well i'm not saying that these won't i'm just saying i guess i'm not educated enough to to, to make them work real easy so to me it, that's a, a potential detractor if i can't figure that out and they might be able to be swapped out or or i just have to find another way to deal with it um, other differences how about those bumpers, Kyle? We saw like a bumper. Oh, yeah. Hard to maneuver all this stuff, huh? Yeah, there you go. these guys right here. Put this on to see them. So we've, we've seen that it looks like John's, and I haven't talked to John on this stuff, but it looks like he's added some, some uh, rubber type bumpers here on this, mm -hmm. I guess I'd call it. I don't know the purpose of that, if that's to, to keep us sitting on the deck more um, so it won't slide off or if that's maybe even for ground use i don't think so i just i think it's got something to do with it to maybe not cause wear or something on this seat i don't know um we just noticed that that's different and kyle was in the tree with it a little bit what i did notice last year is you adjust the size of this depending on your comfort the angle and everything that you want when you're in the tree there are times that the the the, the backrest would sit on the seat and there were times that if i got to really move one or leaning back it would it would flop off okay and maybe and maybe these upgrades here are so that it doesn't as easily slide off the seat because when that happens it's kind of yeah it's jolting it, it kind of scares it's you kind of hairy yeah you're, you're, you're web you can go nowhere it's just the first time it happens to you if it does happen you'll know it because it's yeah. like whoa what, what what just happened there so that might help it to bind on there a little bit there are times that i wanted it off there so i'd scooch it off and i felt like i could get even more reclined you get so comfortable in these things it's mm -hmm. it's uh, awesome now he's also improved kyle i want to say or had provided different ropes i can't remember exactly what what ropes john provided last year but these ones I know are, are already ha have eyes in them, um, so sewn in eyes. I don't think they were that way last year, so they were bulkier. So these are a little more streamlined. We've got nice uh, Prusik hitches on both of them, right? Uh, on the tether and the lineman. Uh, another thing I recall is is uh, the lineman loops are, are forward a little bit more on this, I do believe, than the old version. So it's a little bit easier to get at them. That's either a plus or a minus for you. I like being able to get at stuff. But when you're climbing sticks, it can be a, a something to watch out for with your beaner so you don't hit the sticks and tunk and make noise. So I always kind of liked the lineman loops being back further, honestly, because it protected against that, 
that inadvertent bump in the dark and, and hitting on your stick. Just got to be careful. So that's either a plus or minus depending on what you what you like. He's added Cobra, Cobra hitch for the or Cobra buckle, I should say, for the belt too. So again, kind of nice features there in the sense that you know you can't step on them and break them, which you could with this old old version. Mm -hmm. We never had a problem. Either Some small way. changes with uh, the adjustment pieces mm -hmm. being metal instead of plastic now, just a little more durable, it seems like. Yeah, and then one other change is the the uh, he's got it so it's adjustable here on the back, so you can you can actually make this unit smaller or bigger for the depending on the you know either you got more insulation like I do or you're you're lean and mean like this guy, you can adjust it, this actually, and I think you'd use an Allen wrench to adjust that. I'm gonna mm -hmm. leave it. Looks like it's shipped probably all the way open, big, and that'll work good for me. Right. I think that's about it for the differences. It's very, very similar. He's got Molly across here. You got attachment points everywhere, so they're very similar, and it, it feels very similar. And I think what we'll do now is is uh, get you in the tree with one, Kyle, and take a look at it. Might as well. Okay. Now we're gonna get Kyle in the new JX3 and get him up in the tree as a, an example. Yep. Start undoing the leg straps. Backpack. Secure these leg straps. And as I recall, the order is kind of important of things, right, Kyle? We we could do the leg straps, I think, first, and yeah, I feel you probably could do the belt first. Oh, okay, yeah. I like doing the I like doing the leg straps first for some reason. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. The belt would be around you. Actually, if you're walking out to a tree, the belt probably would be would be on you. Mm -hmm. You're right. This is how I'd walk out the door. Go to my stand. Okay. Grab the lineman. So you got your lineman's belt there. Yeah. You haven't done your bridge up yet, huh? Your bridge is just hanging. Yeah. Do you do that up or you leave it hanging? Uh, I found that if you, you have it connected, putting the seat down can be difficult. So you could tuck it in your belt or leave it hanging. You go either way with it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think what I, you know, it's been a whole year for us. So I think what I did was cook mine because I didn't like it hanging. I'd tuck it in the waist belt and then put the seat down before so you could even hook Keep it and it tuck way, it in there yeah. yeah so it's out of your way so you got your lineman you nice always climb with that there. yeah the prusik knot in the lineman actually seems to work pretty good yeah it's really well yeah as you like you were saying it's a little close to the steps but it's pretty it's, it's okay pretty usable mm-hmm So we get up to our top step. Now Kyle's got an old Hawk Ranger step there um, as, a, as a top step. We use those on the farm lot. They're heavy. Uh, anybody that wants to go mobile would not like them, <laughs> uh, but they work great as a, as a platform for us, actually. Um, that's all you need with this JX3. That's the beauty of the JX3. You'll see it has a center post on it. I don't know what else to call it, a fork horn, fork post. A little fork. Fork, yeah, whale tail, whatever it is. Um, it helps. It's almost like having a third leg or a third knee, if you will. And, and you'll see how and why if you haven't seen these before. While Kyle's getting ready there, he's getting his, his tether around. Um, he flipped down the back seat as well, so he's up to height. Um, we use the saddles. We use Kestrels, tethered. I uh, like them both. Uh, we like the Kestrel a little bit better ourselves. Um, you know, they talk about getting in saddle shape, um, you know, because it can, it can take a beating on the knees and on your feet, depending on what you're using. And if you're a leaner or a sitter, um, that's the, the benefit of this, dare I say, heavy JX3. Um, once you're at the tree and you're up, you are in total comfort. I mean, there is no getting in shape. There is no saddle shape to worry about. And for a bigger guy like myself, uh, that's hugely beneficial. The first year, I mean, we love the saddle, but I... Uh, I definitely was beat up by the end of season, honestly, on that saddle. I felt like my knees, you know, I had to have knee pads all the time to lean into the tree. Um, and, and even their feet would get sore. So it was like, which, which part do I want to get sore <laughs> that day? Um, this, 
easily could have an all day sit in uh, with, with no trouble. Okay, so we're back here. Had a little issue with the beaner. The beaner might've come off on there and we'll have to take a look at the video I was talking, but Kyle's got her going again. He's got his, his tether set up there. He's, where are you going Kyle? About head height there. Some guys go a little taller, or a little lower. Just depends on what you like. It's all adjustable. So now you start just scooching back on that. Oh, okay, you're just, you're just going for it. Proper way to do that would be to let out a little bit of the lineman's belt at a time. Kyle was already up and feels comfortable, but you can just start to, to ease into that seat and you, and you lean back by letting the lineman's belt out. But Kyle's getting her set up now. Now he's working on the, what do you got? An adjustable fork there goes in and out. That's your tree fork. Pretty easy to use. Fucking good. And again, some guys will sit different in this. Sometimes you want to just have your seat, you know, parallel to the ground. Kyle sits his up a little bit. He likes it better that way. He's got, you know, the long segment of knee to, to, to boot. Mm -hmm. um, so it's whatever you like there. So he's stowing his rope now. You just daisy chain that, put it in a pouch, daisy chain it, clip it on, whatever you want to do with it. There's all kinds of attachment points on the side, right, Kyle? There's yeah. loops and, and clips for a bow even on the other side. Mm-hmm. You can do whatever you'd like with your uh, your bridge rope. Remember, how, yeah, and actually you could show them how to tie it around your bridge if you wanted to tighten your bridge down. Remember oh, how we used like to, this? yeah. We found last year on this, the bridge was kind of a, a, a little bit bigger than the, the bridges we had been used to, meaning it's, it's footprint, that triangle was just a little bit kind of in the way. John showed us a nice way to just stow it, uh, stow your, your tether with it and you'd squeeze it and pull that in tight and you can kind of reduce the footprint, if you will, of that bridge. You'd cinch it down and, you know, we may or may not get it like good that, here. Yeah, yeah. you get it tight though. And it was more out of the way. And that's actually kind of a nice way to do it. Yeah, Still give you a little bit of ability to slide side to side. So how are we feeling, Kyle? You can stand up or you can sit, right? Yep. So here he is on his bottom step, standing up there, leaning, or an instant sit. And if we do a sit, Kyle, we can take the feet right off, right? I mean, that's the beauty here. He's not hitting the tree because of that fork, that tree fork. So we normally put screw in steps on each side here on the farm again. You could have a ring of steps if you're on public or mobile. We put a screw in step on both sides. Um, you could get away without one, honestly. If Kyle had to hunt one tree and didn't want to, wanted to test a tree and not use the screw in steps, easily could do it um, and spin around backwards and he'll show that in a second. Here he is taking the, the back straps off. We hunt in the tree with those off. I mean, feel completely secure. You're secured at your waist and leg straps. So even if you were to go upside down for some reason, you're still hooked in. Mm -hmm. um, it's just nice with those straps off. It gives you total mobility and, and freedom to sit and move. You can even adjust uh, the recliner. Your back. Oh, yeah. How far? So, so now Kyle can sit up real easy. Set up. And if I wanted to take a nice nap before let's, sunrise. Let's see it. Yeah, you're out there an hour earlier. How are you sitting? Boom. I mean, Kyle literally, there's been times nice. I've had, I've had to come wake him up. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, or you could lean forward on your tether, right? Like I see John Everhart loves to do. He just yeah. leans forward with both hands crossed and just leans on the tether laying forward. That's, that's another nice way with the head down. I mean, you can, you can just, you're there in total comfort. And How about moving standing around? Standing up is not an issue yeah. even with the shoulder, shoulder straps out. Right. See, I, I got a deer over here and I want to kind of hide myself. I might even yeah put the move get the, the tree between the port a little bit over so that contact Same. point and then i can easily with even one foot this is this foot's doing nothing i can i nice. can control myself around shooting's easy you can use the bridge as a brace point as a brace yeah say there's someone sneak a nice buck sneaking behind me and i gotta i gotta get be ready. careful moving slow first thing i like to do Especially if we don't have this step right here. Normally I would just start stepping around, but you can place that fork a little to the side and then with my left foot, I'm pushing myself around. Very easy to maneuver around the tree, move the fork. And you got a shot, forward. right? Boom, you don't even have to move anymore. You're ready for the shot yeah. behind you. Just yeah. that effort. And it's, it's dead, dead quiet while you're moving around. Now too. let's say I'm out here, Kyle, where are you gonna be at? That's the beauty of all saddle hunting, not just the JX3. See how he's hidden? and he can literally just peek around. Now if he can hide, you can completely disappear. Yeah. Kyle, how about in a hiding position now? You're, you're literally just looking with your head, right? On either side. See the difference there? I mean, conventional stand, you're on the front side of this, or you might, you might be on the back and able to hide, but you might be so far, because you got to get around the tree for a shot. And that's where the saddle gives you all the benefits. Now, 
the JX3 is bigger than a conventional saddle, right? But, yeah. but, but let's be honest and take a look here. What do you see? You see a little bit of Kyle. And with Kyle, if you get behind the tree, like I can put you behind it, it's really no different, guys. I mean, you might see a little bit of that platform sticking out, okay? And he'd have his rope tethered up there, obviously. But you see the platform sticking out, that's it. It's not like it's that much bigger, and especially on a guy like of my size. A saddle covers the, my, you know, my rear end, and so does this thing. I'm as wide as that platform. So for a guy of Kyle size or a guy in more shape, yes, it is a bigger piece of equipment. There's always trade-offs, right, guys? And the trade-off here, in my mind, is complete comfort and no need to get into what they call saddle shape. I mean, you just don't have to go through any aggravation that right. year. No uh, pinching like yeah. the oh, our, good our point. first. Yeah, no hip pinch. No hip pinch. Good just point. Super comfy. Super comfy. And that, that, that avoiding the hip pinch is really what caused us to have that bigger V to the bridge, honestly, because it's, it's out wider. But we can fix that just by using that tether and, and buckling that thing down tight. You can get it as tight as you want. I've gotten it so it's completely tight yeah. and sucks in a little bit, but it doesn't pinch your hips. It just pulls you in and it's out of your way. Mm -hmm. So it's the best of all worlds in my mind. But that, that looks pretty good, Kyle. Anything else while we're in the tree with that? I mean, it, I mean you, you could never take a conventional saddle and easily stay seated and move around that tree. You just you, couldn't do it. No, no, you'd have to, and you'd have to do like these little adjustments. Oh, my foot hurt. My foot's hurting a little. My my hips hurting a little. You got to do all these little adjustments and possibly get busted by. Yeah, the, the you're next moving a lot. Go. That's yeah. I found our, I found myself moving a lot more in the regular cell. Now there's tons of guys that'll say, "Oh, you're crazy. You just know what you're doing." Yeah, maybe. But I'm just telling you, if if you want to try saddle hunting, guys and you have trouble with a conventional saddle, okay, or you went that route and you, and you think saddle hunting's terrible, don't give up yet. Consider a JX3 because I won't hunt in anything else now. Conventional sand or, or anything, this, this is it. This is it for us. It's total comfort, and to me, it's worth the wait. Um, we'll get into it a little bit later with thoughts on, on, on deep hunts and, and things of that nature, but uh, I can just say right now, I went on an Ohio hunt couple years ago with a brother-in-law big nasty hills just to get into the place to hunt I uh, I would take this JX3 for sure because I would plan on being in there all day obviously even if it's at a different tree and I want to be comfortable so this JX3 would be the thing I would hunt out of because it gives me I'm, I'm hidden but I've got that comfort yes it is heavier than the conventional saddle uh, saddle and sticks but this is uh, this is what I would be in anything else Kyle while you're up there I don't think so. Okay, man. Looks good. So one other thing worth mentioning, I think, on this, just comparing the JX3 versus a conventional saddle, is just, again, on the farm, if we were going to try a spot, instead of having to deal with the screw-in hooks that we would, uh, screw-in steps that we would normally put to help us move around, we'd have one on either side. I just wanted to show that, you know, for an initial hunt, you really could get away with just having your, your, your last stick as your platform. And Kyle's gonna demonstrate that now with the JX3. So here he is moving cautiously, and you'd wanna do it in advance, it takes a little practice. Moving around the tree, using his right leg to kind of bear hug the tree and squeeze around. And the hook. And the hook. The tree. So if I come over here, you can see, you can see the hook. Well, you can't see it because of his leg, but he's biting in the tree and he's pushing there. Now, Kyle, you've got a shot there behind you, right? Completely. I mean, I could say it like this for a half hour. And he's hour. comfortable. You feel like you're strained? No. He's not strained at all. And that's just the way we see it better over here. And so it's here still he is. comfortable. You got, if I was you, in the normal saddle, this would be pinching the crap oh, out of me. And you'd be hanging on for dear life. You couldn't even get around a tree without a ring of steps or anything, right? You just would not have much of an option there. Yeah. I can use my other foot instead of that if I want a little distance from the tree, too. Not that, not that you would. How about coming around the other side? Would you be able to do that if you had to? Huh? Come around this side. Can you come around this side? Definitely. So I would get this bit into the tree somewhere. It just Plus takes a little bit of thinking. Foot. This really isn't doing anything. No, it doesn't even help you pull around. No. And again, not that you'd do that, but yeah, if you wanted to shoot that way more, you could, right? Yeah. Tons of potential to move around the nice, tree. Nice, nice. Very With easy. nothing, and it, and it is better, Kyle made a point earlier, if this tree is relatively straight. If you're on a heavy leaner, you're definitely gonna want those side 
those side screw and stuff, they will help. Yeah, if just it's more, a, more footholds, especially if uh, the tree's making you want to swing one way and you want to get on the other side of the tree. Mm -hmm. Those extra footholds are nice. And also, just like in conventional saddle, if, if you're swinging one way, you can adjust your tether, not the opposite direction, your loop, rather, your yeah. girth hitch. You take that the other way and it'll help pull you back in the other direction. Right? Mm -hmm. Looks awesome. Comfortable? Very. But you would like definitely the hooks and you think the biggest benefit would be just a place to rest your legs so there's absolutely no gravity on your, on right, your yeah. legs. So like if say my hook's like this, just a little off center from the tree and I were to lift my feet, I'll start to do that swinging. Okay. You can fix your, your fork, you know, you can get it perfect so that there's none of that swinging. But you want some stability. But if you had an extra foothold, there'd be none of that. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, and you wouldn't have to have your feet, if you wanted to rest them on something, they wouldn't have to be kind of under you. Right. They could be out forward or whatever. Lift them straight up, Kyle. I mean, you're gonna fall out of the tree, straight out your, your feet. Oh. Straight out, up. Yeah. No. All right, I mean, you feel stable? I mean, can you lift them as high as you can lift them? You're not gonna fall over backwards, right? Yeah, I would, I, if I was doing that, I'd probably adjust my fork a little, but yeah. I'm just showing you, you can't fall out of this thing. You're attached all the time. Yeah, definitely. Versus a conventional stand, the benefits obviously is you got that tree between you and the deer, right? Yep, you can hide. You just disappear. I mean, literally, Kyle, your head, you stick your head out and that's about all you're gonna see. It's unreal. All right, here we're gonna show a couple different uh, shooting positions with the crossbow, which admittedly is easier than a conventional bow uh, to, to shoot with. So a crossbow or gun, I think this thing's optimal for. Here's Kyle coming around, no problem, straight on. He's made minimal movement to get around the tree. He can go even further. So we've got more than zero there. We can go out to the side and we can shoot anywhere easily. He's making minimal effort. He's controlling it with the feet. How about behind you, Kyle? The worst shot, huh? Easily swings around for a shot behind him. No problem. How about over here, Kyle? We got one good one over here. You gonna come, just come over the top? Probably, huh? Or how would you do it? A couple of options, yeah. You feel okay that way? Yeah. So minimal. Over the right side's the least comfortable, but. Okay. You still I'm feel steady. steady. Yeah, because you, you've you got, shot. yeah, and you've got that. Uh, I could even. You got that bridge to lean on. You could put, put your hand through the bridge if that's easier. For maybe. more room. Okay. Rest up against the tree. Yeah. Do whatever. Whatever you need. Whatever's comfortable. Yeah. But yeah, I'm steady. Easy. Easy to move around the tree, even hand free. Yeah. Not a problem. Good deal. Yeah. Feel steady. Very. All right, now we're gonna film uh, Kyle getting down the tree. Hunts over. What are we doing? Want like to talk me through that, it? I like to put that fork oh. away. So it doesn't hit my leg or anything. Good point. Safety first. Lineman ready. Yep, so we're always attached. We never un unhook, right? Mm -hmm. Plus, you don't want to be holding the tree while you're trying to work with these ropes. And right. this will hold the tree for you. Yep, want to be hands-free. Got to be sure to go inside there. Yep, okay. Connect it to the loop. Up. Oh, another thing you don't want to forget: put your uh, put your shoulder strap. Oh back yeah, on. I've done that before actually. <laughs> yeah, because what happens when you unhook? And I, I've done this a lot actually. Where you unhook that bridge, and she wants to just start sliding down your butt, right? So yep. it's nice to have that hooked up. Tighter. There you go. You checking it? You feeling like it's holding? Yeah. Yep. So, so now, wait, wait on your line. is completely holding me. The bridge isn't doing anything. Okay. So we can attach that, stow it away. Yeah. Again, I, that bridge I end up stowing in my belt. I think coming down. So you got this your, way. What's that? So your tether you'd usually clip on somewhere, right? And daisy chain it up out of the way. Yeah. Like up on your shoulder, there's a hood D ring you could use, or you could use all kinds of whatever is most comfortable, right? Mm-hmm. 
there's loops on the side of the seat too. You could go on either side of that if you wanted to hook it on too. So you don't really need a pouch for the for, for this in my mind. I mean, it's, it's kind of wide anyway, so we usually just keep them hooked onto a connection point, mm -hmm. right, with the beaners. So we daisy chain that up quick so it's out of our road. Yep. Gonna get in the way. Bridge. And your seat, you're gonna try to flip your seat up, huh? You yeah. either leave the seat down or up. You just gotta kind of give it a firm flip. It kind of snaps into place and see if you can hook it or not. I always had trouble hooking it. You gotta lift it up a little bit. Oh, you got it. You got it hooked. Okay. And it actually hooked up is a little bit nicer because it just is a it little... It won't be bumping against right. the backs of your legs. Smaller footprint for going around branches and stuff if you had to. Yeah. And you just come down. Pretty easy. No problem at all. And you daisy chain that up and you're, you're kind of good to walk out, right? Just leave it like that. Okay, so now we got my dad up there to show you guys how how you can stay hidden even when you're a little bigger of a guy. Walking around here. You see it's pretty much completely hidden. You, you can only really see around the edges a little bit. Now go ahead and move around the tree for us. Yeah. Just as maneuverable. You twist even. We got room to twist. Mm -hmm. Now we would normally have those hooks, but even if we didn't, and I wanted to go over to the other side, I can easily come around, no problem, no shoulders. Yep. I can go from standing to sitting easily, so I'm I'm standing now, obviously. Uh huh. <laughs> Look at him swing around there. Shooting behind the tree there. No problem. How's it for comfort? Typical. We sit. Now I normally would be seated, seated rather. You come over here. Yeah, I would normally sit. Now you can adjust a little bit too, guys, if you need to find your comfort point or your tires sitting the same way. Just by moving this prong a little bit up or down in the tree will change your whole angle. And that sometimes is enough just to give you relief. Or different different pieces. There really is no relief, but just just different comfort levels. Just by moving that a couple of inches, here I'm more inclined. Here I'm more reclined. Mm -hmm. And literally, I mean, I am back in this thing <laughs> a long way, so I could go even more. Very customizable. Nothing on the shoulders, and you know, relaxing if I want to. And if it becomes game time, literally just up in it, and I'm standing. Didn't do anything. I didn't adjust anything. I'm up. I'm ready. And shoot i would normally shoot on this side you know with a crossbow or a gun whatever you got bow this side bow over here bow if you want to go behind you it's probably a lot of ways but boom <laughs> and go behind me no problem very nice won't hunt anything else unless i'm on the ground i won't hunt anything else on a tree the one kind of tree that would get you is maybe a, a cedar tree where you could hook put a, a, a regular conventional hang on stand in a cedar tree if you cut some some uh, branches out because you know they're loaded with branches that's the one thing I could think of where a conventional stand would would really have a benefit over a saddle otherwise I'm in this all the time and frankly I'm finding another tree if I can you know most <laughs> likely <laughs> love them great product from John okay so here we're showing uh, we've got actually got the bee sticks strapped on the outside of the seat. This is how we would plan to go in on a walk, long walk if we were using sticks. We'd strap them on the outside there, tighten down, and you could have your coat or whatever on the inside between the two. And there Kyle is with it. So you can see that's pretty nice. It's not a giant footprint. Um, feel pretty good, Kyle? Feel oh, yeah. secure on there? And you'd obviously have the waist belt hooked up too. We got that stowed now just for cleanliness, but it's. Uh, that, that's how we'd carry the sticks out to the to the stand just like that so we showed you these sticks stowed on here this is the one thing that i got to talk to john on just because i'm personally having trouble with this with this new strap um you want to be able to cinch this down easily and i'm just not figuring out how to do that it seems like i've got to have this unhooked 
to adjust and use two hands to adjust the length of this. So I, this is not like it was last year, unless there's an easy way to do this, and I just don't know it. Um, I, I I don't really like this personally. Um, you'd have to adjust the length of that, get that as tight as you want it, and then go ahead and seal it. So it just, to me, is a little bit more finicky. It's a great system for, for stowing or for stowing and hauling your sticks, but I want to be able to cinch this down, and we'll show you how it would look uh, on the version last year. So here I've got my JX3 from last year. We switched out to just the Hawk Heliums uh, that I've modified just to show. Now these, they're not quite as uh, wide, if you will, so you can, might want to put these in between the seat to haul them. Might work better, or there could be another way to haul them, but this would be one way you could do it too. But here we just want to show the, the old straps, just the, the conventional plastic straps, but with a free hook that you can literally just cinch down, you know, one-handed, honestly. You can squeeze this thing right together and cinch them down tight. And I've cinched coats on there and everything else, like we said. So we've got it tight just that easily. That to me is what I've got to figure out uh, with the new one. I just can't tighten those straps easily. I must be doing something wrong. Uh, don't know. If not, then we'll, we'll get it fixed. Okay, so final thoughts on the JX3 and the new one. Um, seems a lot like the old one to me. Um, just sort of some upgrades uh, with the buckles, like we said. A little more durability there, I would say. The padding, Kyle even said you can notice it's a little bit thicker uh, for the shoulder pad and the carry out, so that's pretty nice. Um, the bumpers, you said the bumpers. Uh, yeah, comfortability wise, it's it's pretty similar to the last one. This def this upgrade, like we mentioned earlier, definitely seems like it kind of prevents that slipping off the seat that we talked about earlier. Um, but in overall comfort, they're both, I would say, comparable. Yeah, it reminds you a lot of hunting, not a lot of one last year. Yeah, it reminds me of last season. Now, what we didn't cover also is that this is this can be made to sit on the ground, actually, and it, more so for turkey use, I would say. I've seen, and John's got videos on that, but it's got these this this metal standoff, if you will, keeps you up off the ground. There's some in the back, too. Um, and you, and you use your, your beaners on two other loops to kind of hold it. So it's just like a lot of turkey vests you would see that actually gets that back tension so you can sit there. So that might be nice for guys because, you know, none of this stuff's cheap and it could be a dual purpose use. We wouldn't really use it that way. I don't know how many guys would, maybe, maybe some would, um, but we'd have, you know, a separate turkey vest ourselves. Uh, but you wouldn't have to. You could use just this if you wanted to. Um, you're probably not watching this video or certainly didn't make it to the end of this thing if you're not into saddle hunting already or really thinking about saddle hunting but just some of my the evolution along the uh the years that got us into saddle hunting we kyle and i've hunted for a long time we hunted conventional hang on stands just like everybody else with lifelines and and uh, really liked our stands liked our our millenniums you know for comfort uh, i've got a bad lower back so that kind of big stand is is really necessary for me um it's just not conducive to to going in real easy without carrying a big climber like we weighed in earlier to go into some of these hunts and, and sit all day for me. Uh, I just couldn't get comfortable. So we went to the saddle. Um, really liked the idea of the saddle. Again, tried a couple of different kinds of saddles. We settled on the, the Kestrel we liked. It's a little bit bigger than the Tethered's were, a little heavier. It just fit us better and it's very individual uh, mm -hmm. a thing, but stayed put better and uh, really worked well. Got a deer in my second hunt. Uh, with the thing, you know, so anybody can learn it, anybody can do it. Yeah, I'd say anyone would say the biggest plus of saddle hunting is just being able to hide behind that tree and, yeah. you know, be really uh, stealthy. Yeah, um, I would. The biggest issue with it before we got to the JX3 though was that pinching and just having to fidget around, not getting uh, totally comfortable. And these are just a uh, crazy upgrade. Lot yeah. Crazy comfort. Yeah, the, the hip pinch that Kyle's talking about was was bad for me. It wasn't quite as bad for him, but it, it was bad for me. And you, you know, to try to get in shape and get used to that kind of thing. The knees, it really took a pounding on, on the knees just against the tree. I just never was quite as comfortable, honestly. Um, and my feet, my feet would because I'd try to do more leaning than I would sitting because my knees were sore. So back and forth for me. And we didn't have, you know, a good platform here on the farm either. A good platform might help with the feet. You might be a lot better being a leaner off of a platform. But the, that spike on the JX3 really takes most of the most of your weight and puts it into the tree for you. So yeah, really takes the weight off your feet and knees. Yeah. So if if you're gonna assess the saddle versus the saddle, there's guys that would say there's no way I would go with the JX3 because I'm not gonna take that kind of big bulky equipment. I I understand that, um, but for a guy in my condition and with the, some of the ailments I have, um, I'm gonna take the JX3 every time um, just because it's so darn comfortable when I'm at a tree. It's just it's just unbelievably comfortable and and that will cut down on the movement. Again, for a person like me, I would fidget around and move more than I cared to admit in the, in the conventional saddle, just because I was, I was honestly sore 
uh, at times. So this JX3 is, is just a, a lawn chair up in a tree. But you can see with the videos we did with Kyle, it isn't like when you get behind a decent sized tree, which is, you know, fairly standard. You want to find a tree like that. You don't have to, but you, you, you're still breaking up your, your you know, your, your body size, your silhouette with the thing. So mm -hmm. I don't see a big difference there. It's really more of a, of a weight game and a weight issue. Now, if I'm going to Ohio, which I mentioned earlier in the video, um, the, the particular ground we were on was pretty open terrain, but very hilly. Okay. And not a lot of branches on the trees. So pretty conducive, honestly, for a climber. Uh, conducive for putting sticks up easily so pretty effortless in those sorts of trees but with with the no branches again a big advantage of the saddle hunting ver to me versus a, a versus a climber is that you're behind the tree that Kyle mentioned you're behind that tree it's, put, it's putting you uh, behind that tree so the deer doesn't see you um, that that's an advantage I think you can go a little bit higher um, you, you can go higher in uh, as high in a climber and a hang on stand there's no debate it's just there's something to the feel is the same no matter what height you're at with with one of these saddles because you just got that tree right there and it's it's hard to describe but it isn't like you're you're looking off into the abyss you know 30 feet up on a hang on stand it's just it just feels different mm -hmm. um one of the things we showed earlier and there's a lot of videos on it but is a is a lone wolf hand climber the hand climbing portion guys have retrofitted those and used those as a platform i could see that really working out i'd give that a lot more effort if i was going into a public land hunt I would actually try that uh, or consider it strongly versus carrying the sticks um, just because a lot of the trees were straight it wasn't a lot of effort to find a, a straight limbless tree and I could see uh, using that and, and climbing up and you could do that easily with this thing get up there just like you would a conventional climber and and then strapping that around there tight once you reach your height and using that as your platform because anything there as Kyle demonstrated earlier you don't need a ring of steps with this. You just don't need it. You can you can get by and actually do quite well, I'm pretty sure, without a ring of steps with this thing, just because it's, it seems a little easier to negotiate and move yourself around that tree. Definitely, yeah. Um, one other thing that we didn't show, and we I think we actually will show it here, is just uh, what it would look like with a with a pack of sticks on the back of these. So I, I think I'll, I'll kind of show that. And we didn't demonstrate the, the packability of this either, um, how you can put things behind here. There's some... Uh, optional attachments I want to say uh, for strapping this and using it more like a like a, a pack for packing things out like even quarters of meat um, so this is kind of supposed to be a, a do-it-all piece of equipment we wouldn't use that here on the farm honestly we'd go get the tractor but again if you're on a big public land hunt you want to use this optimally and I think there's just more uses than we're we're doing yeah yeah you could you could fit a lot of stuff in there whether it's gear or meat even yeah um, then you just use those leg straps, strap yep. it, and you've got it. a nice padded shoulder strap. So, and you've got the hip belt too, so you, you know, you're out of there. Right. Okay. Good. We like it. Yeah, All we right. do. <laughs>